Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating insiders. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to Dateable. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Dateable. We want to hug you right now, but we can't. (laughs) We could. We can give you a over the audio hug. I don't know how that works. Do you feel it? I feel it. Energy. You know, I feel like the whole shift, because you and I are clearly in different locations. We do this over video, over Riverside, virtual recording, but it does feel like I'm with you. And when we actually meet other experts, it's like, oh, we're meeting. It's like, we're not really. I think COVID really just like reshaped what meeting and virtualness meant. Yeah, we're still on the same planet. So I still feel your energetic being through the airways. I don't know. There's something. There's something there. But energy, though, is one of those, I guess, topics that recently got surfaced in dating. Like, we used to be about, like, how you dress and how you act and how you talk. Now it's all about energy and vibe. Like, when we think about attraction, which is kind of the topic, which is the topic, not kind of the (laughs) topic for today, energy is part of the attraction. But I feel like it's so new to the equation that people don't think about it still. I would say it's probably 80%. Like, of Mm. course, there's like a baseline of certain qualities that you're looking for. We're all, we all have our lists. We all have something on there. I don't, we're not going to pretend like that doesn't exist. But I do think that someone can have all the right things on paper. I mean, this is the problem with dating apps, right? Is you see someone's profile, they look Mm -hmm. good, and then you meet them in person and there's no connection, no chemistry. And it's because the energy is off. Or the flip side is like someone's, you know, okay on their profile and then you meet them and it's fireworks. Yeah. And you don't know until you are in that person's presence. So I just came back from a girl's trip with my college girlfriends in Santa Fe. And we always reminisce about the people we went to college with, (laughs) of course. And we were breaking down some of the people that were like super attractive in college (laughs) or like got a lot of action. And objectively, if we broke down every physical aspect, it was like, ah. I mean, this person's okay, like physically, yes, but it was the whole package, their whole aura mm-hmm. that was so attractive. And now, like 20 some years later, still looking back, it's like, yeah, it's the way this guy used to walk on campus with this swagger, this confidence. 100%. I would have never swiped on him if dating apps existed back then, but just something about the way he presented himself. Same with this girl that like got so much attention in college. She just had this aura about her that was like, you want to get to know me. You want to be my friend and you want to date me. You can't even explain that. You can't like put that into words what it really is. I'm so excited to get into this conversation because we also, you know, polled our community too of what's attractive. And I was like, Mm. not surprised, but also kind of surprised because none of the stuff on the list that came back were physical traits. Some of the ones that came back, kindness, confidence, like someone that's like a forever learner, like growth oriented, someone that doesn't play games, sense of humor, active listening, kindness again, knowing yourself and having a life of your own, like giving off that energy, yeah, ambition, mm-hmm. self-assuredness, kindness, emotional intelligence. There were more, but that's like the, the gist of the list, but never in this list once. Tall, you know, certain size, none of the stuff that you think of, quote unquote, with attraction. That's why we're in a love crisis, because that is so against everything dating apps yeah. lets you filter for. <laughs> so we're <laughs> We just keep thinking like, oh, okay, this is the like we filter for the things that don't matter. And then we meet someone, we get disappointed because the things that do matter are not represented in their dating profile. That's the conundrum we're in. I know. And I I think it's really interesting because I don't know, UA, I feel like when I see these on TikTok and Instagram, I kind of get a little cringe feeling. I don't know if you feel the same way as I do, but like the fit checks that people do before (laughs) dates where they're like showing you their outfit. I'm just like, oh my God, does doesn't matter, especially for hetero women, like dating men, like they don't care. (laughs) 
It's the entire package you show up in. It does not matter what shirt you're wearing. And I think we don't ever talk about like energy checks. No. Of like, what vibe am I giving off? Because you could be so well put together clothing wise. And then you come into the date being like, dating's the worst. All dates don't go anywhere. Doesn't matter what you look like. It really doesn't. I mean, just don't look like, just don't look terrible right, right? Like, don't, don't there's try a to, line yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like don't show go. up in your like sweatpants although during covid did that and so that's what i mean same same <laughs> but, but yes, like yeah there, there's, a, be there's a presentable still yeah, yeah. yeah there's a baseline of being a <laughs> decent clean human being but totally. beyond that don't try to look bad <laughs> right that's the line but i remember my best dates were always after i taught dance class because i was on this adrenaline mm. high i would go home run home take a quick shower i was i get clean and then i put on comfy clothes still because i felt so confident walking out of my dance classes it's like nothing could ever bring me down and i would just bring that fucking energy on a date and everybody gets uplifted right and again not saying like purposely show up bad i remember we had a friend actually how ua and i met she was a matchmaker yeah, Did, yeah. were you with me when i don't know if i was with you actually but she was on a, a fake date like a pseudo date no to like give this a guy feedback and <laughs> a group of us were at the same restaurant and he comes in and he's wearing like gym shorts and it just like was noticeable that he just didn't give any shits and that's not good not saying to do that but i do think we spend a disproportionate amount of time on things that don't matter Like beyond Mm -hmm. a certain point, right? Like doing a TikTok about your outfit and like really, you know, planning that out to a T. Like there's a point of diminishing returns. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's no point. There's no point. And like also nobody cares your fit check. I'm sorry. Those have really bothered me. Like why? But the energy check is so important. Like you should not be leaving the house if you're in a bad state. Like if you're already going into the date being like, this isn't going to work out, you might as well not even go on that date. Yes. I much rather someone cancel a date than show up with a bad vibe. Yeah. That's terrible. 100%. I don't want that. I want to read a couple more that came in from Facebook, Instagram. I pulled a couple quotes because I thought these were so nice. So a few ones that came in, a warm, genuine smile that just melts me. This is again, what's attractive. Mm. Something about the eyes when they just look at you. Yeah. It makes me feel feel more attracted, but also more attractive, which in turn Mm. makes me feel like I'm enough for this person. That's good. And then the last one, there were many, but this one I'll read is, I'm an introvert with lots of complex layers. So when someone just sees me and they appreciate and understand what they see. Wow, that's really deep. They're all feelings, right, that you're getting. Like even seeing someone smile, it's a feeling of warmth that you want to be with this person. You can tell when you're with someone who has a fast food vibe and you're just taking a number versus like fine dining restaurant and they've created a meal just for you with love. Like you can tell the difference between the two. Whoever said looking into someone's eyes, that's so on point. Mm -hmm. You can tell when someone's looking at you but not really looking at you. Have you ever had that feeling? Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, like someone that's just kind of clocking it in. Yes. And they're like looking beyond you. (laughs) You That is my biggest pet peeve. I actually got angry at one of my friends once and it turned out there was sun in her eyes. So that's why she wasn't looking at me. (laughs) The sun was coming right in. But there's harsh, Julie. I know. But there was this like feeling that you're just like, why am I even here? If this person can't give me their attention. Yeah. I agree. It's same with when people are on phones all yeah. the time. It's like, I don't feel like you're present. You're physically here, but, you know, I feel like you don't want to be around me. So why bother? I feel like at least people have the common sense on dates. Maybe this has changed, but we haven't heard it mm. to not have their phones out all the time. Ooh, I don't know. I think I, I hope. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard 50-50. Really? Yes. Damn. Yeah, I've heard 50-50. I've, I've heard that people intentionally put away or put their phones face down, but they refer to their phones a lot. They're like, oh, let me show you this. Or, oh, "Oh, I should show you this. What I ate the other day was so fun. And then as soon as someone grabs their phone, their attention is already away from the person they're with, right? I'm the same way. As soon as I want to show someone something on my phone, I'm already like, oh, 
Oh, bed. alerts. Yeah. yeah. You're like already in this other world. So maybe it's like, like stop referring to your phones and say, I'll show you later or I'll show you like after dessert or something. That's a good point. I was thinking more like blatant disrespect of like texting yeah. it from. But you're right. We're so ingrained with phones that it's part of conversation. But it does take you away. It does. Changes the energy. Yeah. So how do we exude more of that attractive energy? Our expert today, he's a dating expert, Matt Boggs. He's a best-selling author, speaker, and expert dating coach who helps women understand the hearts and minds of men, (laughs) create deep connection with their partner, and manifest the relationship they want. But he's also here to speak more generally and also deep dive into chemistry and attraction, not just from women trying to attract men, but uh, this applies applies to all genders and all people. So I share this on the episode, but like he was one of those experts, like him and Matthew Hussey, they were like the Mm -hmm. how to crack the code on men. (laughs) When I was in my early stages of being a clueless dater, that was very attractive to me. So I found his work early on and, you know, obviously spoke to me and helped me in many ways. I think though, there was this one story he told that we hear him tell, so I won't reveal, but it's basically like, like the vibe he was putting off and how people perceived him that he had no idea that he was doing. So one, he's obviously studied attraction and understands that from a dating expert perspective, but he's also been through it himself when he thought he was giving off a certain vibe and then realized he wasn't at all. Yep. So this episode is so perfect for, hey, have you ever gotten a text (laughs) saying there wasn't chemistry or emotional connection? I've definitely gotten those before. Yep. So you're trying to dim mystify those or anyone who wants to better understand attraction and how important there are other elements to the equation, not just physical looks. Yeah. And then we also go into some of the turn offs and turn ons that either kill attraction or spark it. Mm. Ooh. (laughs) Ooh, that's a good one. What you'll take away, really evaluate the vibe you may be giving off. Like we mentioned, Matt Mm -hmm. himself did not realize what he was. I think a lot of us don't know what vibe we're giving off on dates. And then Mm -hmm. how do you build more attraction with the people you are dating all the way from the early stages to, you know, years down the line when you're in a committed, fully formed partnership, married, all the works. Yep. And also just understanding, having more self-awareness, right? I think that like attraction is all about self-awareness. And whoever wrote on our Instagram, like, I feel I feel attracted to this person when they make me feel attractive. We forget that there's another person there. And if you make them feel good, then they see you more positively. Well, I think that's such a good point. And that was another question we actually asked on Instagram too, is like, is there something they did on a date that was attractive? Because it's not just the Mm. qualities, right? It's like, we got a few responses that I'll read is asked for permission, asking a question, paying Uh a bill, initiating a kiss. Mm -hmm. Another one was they talked about the next date on the date. Yeah. A guy who owned a brewery got me a couple beers he knew I'd like, you know, acts of service, gifts, all that Uh stuff. But I think these actions with all of these, right, the asking for permission, it's making you feel like safe. The guy who owned a brewery, I feel like that's like the feeling taken care of, talking about the next date, the sense of security, all that's very attractive. Mm. What is something that someone's done on a date that made you feel like they were more attractive? I mean, I absolutely loved when my partner asked for the next date on the date. I agree with this Mm -hmm. person. It showed conviction. It showed that they wanted to get to know me. They knew what they wanted. They'd go after it. There was like a lot of stuff that that showed that was very attractive. I mean, I think some of the other stuff, like clearly sense of humor is a big one. I feel like you can have Mm -hmm. two people that maybe one of them is like objectively more quote unquote attractive, but they have a bland sense of humor and the other one Mm -hmm. is less but killer sense of humor, or at least something I jive with, I would choose that person any day. Mm, yeah. What about you? Yeah. I think anytime someone related something back to me, mm. like telling me, oh, what was it about my profile that caught their attention? Or what was their first impression of me? Or how what they experienced that day related to something they saw in my profile? Mm. Like that makes me feel seen. And yeah. it makes me feel like I'm not just a number, like they actually wanted to go out on a date with me. That's nice. 
Yeah. So I think it's really, it comes down to like, what vibe are you giving off about just who you are as a person, but also the vibe of relating to that other person that you're on a date with? Yes. Some of the worst dates I've been on where I felt someone was not attractive were with the most attractive people. A hundred percent. Just saying, because they felt like they didn't need to try at all. I agree. Like when you're a nine or a 10, I feel like you can only go down, right? Yes. <laughs> attraction. But if you're like hovering at a five or five to a seven, you can only go up from there if you have the good vibes going for you. Obviously, the rating system, quote unquote, it's all subjective <laughs> in general. Like yes. someone's yes, five, for yourself. Be someone's 10. So put that out for there. Yourself. Yes. But also, mm-hmm. I do agree that the energy completely changes how attractive someone is. Yeah. Yay. So much to be a fun episode. This is a great <laughs> episode. You know, I, I love this topic. I think our we know our listeners love this topic. And yeah, just hopefully can put you all in a good headspace. We talk about this in our book, actually, at length. There's a whole chapter devoted to showing up. What energy? What are you doing? What are you putting out there? We go in a lot of depth because we really believe that this is so core to one, enjoying your dating life, but also attracting the right type of partners. What are you putting out there? Yeah. What are you putting out there? It's in our book that's coming out in January 2025. I know it sounds like a long ways away, but you can pre-order the book now and your future self will thank you. The link is howtobedateable.com. And if you cannot wait until the book comes out, like order the pre-order the book still. But if you are like, give me something to do now or to something to noodle over, we have our Finding Your Person program that's open right now for registration. In this program, we talk about vibe check. We talk about how to put out the energy to attract the right people and filter out the wrong people for you. Yeah. You don't got no time for that. It's also important. Like attraction, we're always like, oh, it's about acquiring more people, like attract more people. No, you also want to attract the right people and get rid of the riffraff. You don't want to attract everyone. Trust me. Like, like you want you don't want the riffraff if you are truly serious about finding your person. So that program is currently open. We have limited spots because there is a personalized element to this program and it's only two of us, Julie and I. <laughs> so we can't take on that many people at once. That's why we open these up every once in a while, have limited spots. Grab your spot before it fills up. Yep. So you can go find that on our website, datablepodcast.com slash programs. We all also have a new iteration called Finding Your Person Plus for mm-hmm. even more support. We actually only have a couple spots left because that clearly is like more of our time even. Yeah. So if you really yeah. want to get ahead of everything and really just fast track your love life, we love this program. This is, I think, our favorite one. We love the calls we do with everyone, even if you do Finding Your Person. I don't even want to say like the regular one, just Finding Your Person. You know, it's still amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but that one, even when we do that like we always get off the calls and we're just like wow these people are so dateable and like seeing like the difference between the different Mm -hmm. calls as they go through the program it, it just really melts my heart so if you've been on the fence about this definitely give it a shot. If you want more info, you can always DM us. We can answer any of your questions. Like UA said, it's going to close on October 6th. So make sure to get in now before it does because we have limited bandwidth. And you know, I do think these courses are so different than the book, even though they're getting to the same root of helping you, you know, find your person and become your most dateable self. Best case scenario where the book does come around, you're already in a happy, healthy relationship. But I also also think the book is still valuable in that case. So all in yes. all, let's get ahead of it now. We might as well not wait till January. We know that some of you are saying, I'm not ready for this yet, right? I'm still working on some stuff. I'm working through some stuff. I'm not ready for this yet. Well, here's a little hack for you is that once you enroll in the program, you have lifetime access to oh, the yeah. content. So take your time. We're yeah. not asking you to finish this program in like a month or even two weeks. Some people take a really long time or they revisit certain sections of the program. This is purely there as a resource for you. We are there as support for you. And for those personalized calls that you get, you can delay those. Yeah, book them when you're free. Book them when you are ready for (laughs) us. But you can always get started on something. There's always a section that you can get started on now and then just finish it later. I'm really glad you brought that up because we always say it takes six weeks. And that's if you're like pretty diligent doing it. Yeah. But you don't have to do that. People always be like, oh, are you guys still going to be around for the call? Like, if I don't do it, we're like, 
you just you just book them when you're ready. We're here. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. Don't worry. Awesome. Well, yeah. hope to see you there. And if we go back full circle to how we started this convo, we get on the calls. Everyone's like, oh, it's so crazy to meet you guys in the flesh, even though I we're know. through a computer. But we do do our two on ones. So we will both meet you and, you know, yeah. really get into what you're going through specifically. All about you. All about you. Okay. Well, another thing you can do is follow us at Dateable Podcast on Instagram. We have really been beefing up our Instagram. So get on it and then also subscribe to our newsletter. This is where you find out about things first. But also the idea here is that we can leave you with some inspiration of something that you need to hear every week that will just keep Mm -hmm. you motivated and hopeful and excited about the journey of, you know, finding love and all that comes with it. So we're really here again as a resource. So hope to see you, you know, on Instagram and then also in our newsletter. Okay, well, before we get into it, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. This is a weird thing about me. When I went to summer camp, we were told to take really quick showers to preserve water. It's something I've carried into adult life. And now I'm like, maybe there is a merit to taking longer showers to unwind and relax, especially now that I've been using Osea's new Andaria Algae Body Wash, which has transformed my shower experience into a tropical paradise. UA and I always talk about this stuff like we cannot get enough. It's the citrusy scent that just smells so freaking good. Just thinking about it makes me want to take a shower. What I love about it though is how it leaves my skin feeling soft, smooth, and revitalized. I find it to be a much gentler cleansing experience than traditional body washes. And that's because it's pH balanced with a hydrating formula. So upgrade your shower with clean, vegan face and body care from Osea. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLEPODCAST at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATABLEPODCAST for 10% off. Does anyone else feel like there are so many distractions in the world and it's just so hard to focus? Anyone who knows me knows I can't function without my morning coffee, but lately it's not doing it for me. I'll still hit a wall by 2 p.m. and my mind felt foggy and I was just stressed out. UA has been telling me about Magic Mind, which is a mental performance shot that she's seen at Air One, Sprouts, and some other high-end grocery stores. So when they came in as a partner, I had to do their seven-day challenge. In just a few days, I noticed a huge difference, feeling more focused, clear, and calm all day. I always like to make sure I know what's going in my body, so I was glad to see that it's not a quick fix. This formula was created with doctors, perfected over 10 years, and designed for long-term mental performance. But the best part is, if you don't like it, you can get a full refund for 100 days after your purchase, no questions asked. Right now, get up to 48% off your first subscription, or 20 percent off one-time purchases with code DATABLE at checkout. Go to magicmind.com slash DATABLE and experience the magic for yourself. That's magicmind.com slash DATABLE. Okay, let's hear it from Matt Boggs, all about building attraction. Welcome, Matt, to DATABLE. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's great to be with you guys. UA and Julie in the house. (laughs) And you get our names right. I mean, you're probably the best guest ever. I mean, (laughs) I'm so excited to have you because as soon as we saw your name come through, it brought me back to like when I was in the thick of serial dating. And I remember watching your videos back then. So this is a little surreal. That's so cool. Well, I hope you got some good stuff. Julie was so excited when your name was brought to us and she was like trying to tell me exactly what she learned from you. But we were like, oh, this topic of attraction is very interesting. It's a topic that we never get old of because everyone talks about it. And also attraction kind of evolves over time, too. So it's nice to have like a little update of what are people attracted to? What makes someone stay attracted to their partner? And then what are some trends in attraction? So that's the main topic. We're so excited to get into this. Like, I think one of the things, you know, that stands out with your story is that conference you went to and like how you feel like it was the turning point. I remember this all these years later. So please tell us. Just tell us the story. (laughs) Oh, that's great. That's great that you remember that because it really was like a life changing moment for me. And growing up, 
one of my biggest dreams is we have, you know, aspirations of maybe being a professional athlete or owning a great business or whatever it was equal to any other aspiration I had, if not more, was I wanted to find the love of my life. Mm. Like I wanted to find that person, build a family together, have this incredible romance. And so everywhere I went, even from junior high to high school, like I was always on the lookout for like, who's my person, you know, just hopeless oh. romantic. Through and through. You never know on the playground. Exactly. Is she on the monkey bars over there? <laughs> Her in that Oshkosh Bagash outfit. Man, <laughs> Hell <know>. yeah. <laughs> so uh, my friends would kind of make fun of me because they knew this about me and, and whatnot. But as I grew older, I mean, my parents are divorced. All my friends' parents are divorced. And so I didn't get to see really modeling in front of me what worked. And so I had a series of crash and burn relationships in my 20s. And I finally thought I had met the person, like my person. And out of the blue, she calls me up and breaks up with me. And I felt like my heart had been shattered into a million different pieces. Mm -hmm. And um, around that time, my mom comes to me and says, hey, there's this personal development seminar happening. And I know you're struggling in this area and you want this result for your life. Maybe you'll learn some things that will be good for you. And so I said, all right, I'll go. And it was a week long in-depth, intense personal development retreat up in Napa Valley. Really? And there were a hundred people there, like half men, half women. And on day four, halfway through this thing, the facilitator says, all right, you guys, we're going to play a game called the Island Game. And she put all of us men sitting in chairs kind of at the front of the room. There's 50 of us all in a row. And then she gets the women to stand in front of us. And she goes, all right, ladies, here's the question. If this was the last man on the planet to choose <laughs> wow. from... <laughs> would you want to be stranded with him on a deserted island? Whoa. She goes, this is not based on attraction. This is based on beingness. You've been with these guys for four days. Mm. You've seen how they've shown up. Would you want to be with them on this deserted island? And just vote yes or no. No explaining. Just look them in the eye. Yes or no. So they start voting. They go down. Yes, yes, no, no, yes, no. And our job was to take a tally of the yes votes and no votes. So we each have a clipboard and pen and paper. So at the end, they all get done voting. And she goes, all right, gentlemen, stand up. And I want you to order yourselves from the man who has the most yes votes, Dan, to the man who has the most no votes. And so we start comparing numbers and it's kind of like Southwest Airlines. We're like, hey, what number do you have? In your <laughs> Where are you at the queue? Am I in front of you or not? And so as I was trying to like make my way down to the yes side, I kept getting pushed back, back, back. I was second to last Damn. with the most no votes. And... Here's even the kicker. The guy next to me who was last, nobody liked that guy. Like he was a total asshole, like mean. This guy was mean. And I was like, well, I could see why he's voted last, but I thought I was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Like It was complete distortion from what I perceived my reality to be. The facilitator was really, really good. And she goes, is there anyone here who's surprised by maybe where they're lined up? Mm -hmm. And so very humbly, I raised my hand. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, Matt, great. Ladies, anybody here willing to tell Matt why they voted no on him? And all these hands shot up in the air. And they all wanted to tell me why they voted no. Savage. Um, wow. It was savage. And here's the cool thing. Ken Blanchard's got a great phrase where he says, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Mm. And so if there's something that's not working in our life, right? Our relationships aren't working. Our love life, business, health, whatever it is, the first place to go is a place of accountability to say, okay, I am a part of this result. Mm -hmm. How am I showing up? I had a story going on. These were all just kind of one-off nuances in all these relationships. Like this one didn't work out because of that. And I could point to something. That one didn't work out because of that. I pointed to something. And I had all these excuses. But the one thing that was consistent in all of these relationships was me. Mm. Like I was this common denominator. And so these women stood up and I'm so grateful for their courage in this moment. Because it's easy to kind of hide in the shadows, like vote and then <laughs> yeah. just hide. <laughs> but like they, they stood up and they were like, here's what I see in you from a position of like, I want to give this gift to you. Okay. And, and ultimately what they helped me see was that they didn't feel like they could fully connect. Mm. They didn't feel like they were getting the authentic mat. They were getting some like trying to look good version of mm. it. Like a performative version. A performative version. And so when they said that, as much as I didn't want to hear that, there was a resonance of truth. I believe that when we hear truth, we can feel it. Yeah. I just felt the truth. And as I, as I reflected on that and like that night, I just laid in my bed and I just wept because I knew really what was going on. And it was, 
I had such a fear of rejection. I had such a fear of non-acceptance. I had such a fear of disconnection because what I wanted most was connection mm. that I thought I had to be perfect mm. yes. to get connection. I thought I had to be what other people wanted to get connection. So I kind of built this looking good program where I wouldn't talk about any of my flaws or I wouldn't um, show up really as just my authentic self. And I had to begin to pull back the layers on, well, how do I solve that? And here's what I didn't realize. Taking this back to attraction, what I'm most fascinated are the situations where like there's all surface level attraction stuff. I mean, we've all read the blogs and read the research and like shiny hair and <laughs> hip to waist ratio and the whole, you know and all of this stuff and you're like okay all of that works to some degree but to me the energetics of attraction yes. is the exciting conversation 100%. and so one of these dynamics and it was part of what i was having it was i would be attracted to people who weren't attracted to me oh. like the more not interested they were the more my interest went up mm -hmm. and i see that as a pattern in my coaching clients and through that same circumstance then the ones who were interested in me, I didn't like. Yeah. And as I began to reflect on this pattern, I noticed a couple fascinating things that I would be interested in somebody when they didn't like me. But the moment they started to show real interest in me, my attraction would plummet. Mm. My attraction would go, no, no, they like me. My attraction goes down for them. What is that? And I began to study that and I began to unpack that. And there were two really, really phenomenal pieces of awareness that both have the same solution. And- when we feel like we're not enough to some degree, when we feel like there might we might be internally flawed, that we're not lovable or some part of us isn't lovable, we are terrified of two things, opening up and being seen and really risking our heart and loving somebody and letting them in because if they find out that we're not lovable, they're going to reject us. Mm -hmm. They're going to push us away. And so like I'd be attracted to somebody who didn't like me because that's safe. But as soon as they started to like me, my own attraction would plummet as a protection mechanism. It was guarding and protecting my own heart. So the irony of this and just being authentic and letting people really see me and connect to me, the solution to that was learning self-love. Mm -hmm. And like learning self-love, that concept back then for me was like <laughs> doing something I'd never done before. It was like an absolute foreign language. Yeah. It was like, how do you do that? What does this look like? And so um, really diving into that though and really allowing myself to love the unlovable parts, I fully felt something shifted. It was like my heart swung this door wide open. Yeah. And my ability to feel attraction for people who also showed interest for me transformed. Wow. Like I could finally dive in and like let people in. We want to get into all that, like how that is possible. Yeah. I think there's so much to unpack with what you said, though, like so much of it I can resonate with, like this feeling of like it's safer to be with these people because you can blame them, right? Instead of it actually having it happen to you. I want to go back, though, to like the energetic shifts, because that's also what you and I find the most interesting about attraction. Like, agreed. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much out there about just superficial. We have like a whole chapter in our book, actually, about just showing up in like how to have the right energy and all of that for dating. So like from what you've learned, what is kind of that energetic shift that's important? Because I think what you described is exactly that. It's like the initial attraction might have been there, but the more you were around these people, they felt this energy. So for me, it was judgment of myself, like not mm -hmm. feeling enough mm -hmm. of myself, not willing to accept myself. And so and this is what I believe. I believe we're energetic beings. Your energy reaches out. It reaches out far beyond your skin. There's science that backs this up and your vibration extends and reaches out. And you can't just be in a vibration um, that's directed inward. It reaches out in all directions. So because I was self-critical, mm. I was in a judgmental vibe towards myself. That's what other people were picking up uh, on. Yeah. Even though I was thinking, well, I'm not I'm not judging you. They were like, well, yeah, but because you're not giving yourself permission to be authentic, yeah, they feel that. They don't have permission to be authentic. And so that creates the space of kind of walking on eggshells or just there's something about that person that you just don't feel comfortable around and you can open up around. And do you think all this stems from fear or is it like, what is the root cause yeah. for all of this? Well, it's belief systems. So fear is an emotion that arises based on your perception of reality or a subconscious belief that you have, right? So the belief that this is going to cause me pain then generates fear when we're faced with that situation. So 
it really comes down to, okay, well, what are the beliefs that are in my way? What are the beliefs that are not aligned with the result that I'm wanting to create? And what are the ones that are aligned? Like dating is hard. Yeah. There's a belief, Mm -hmm. there's a perception, right? It's like, for example, I ended up coaching this woman who was in her seventies. She had spent 29 years um, as a Basically, where she's not dating. 29 years as a nun. Let me say it that way. Okay. And and celibate. So as a nun, celibate, not dating. And so her whole story was, I'm not experienced enough. She had a brace on her leg. So she's like, I'm not sexy enough. I'm Mm -hmm. too old. Men don't want to date me. So all of these beliefs were like, ultimately, why she signed up. She's like, I know that this is in my way. So how do you rewire that? How do you actually go to say, okay, well, what belief is actually going to serve you? What if there was a guy who loved the fact that you were a nun for more than 20 years? He thought you were beautiful and sexy just as you are. What if that possibility still existed? One of the ways that you begin to repattern these beliefs is you create what's called a dream achieve moment Mm. where you imagine in the future, because the subconscious mind is where these beliefs live and the subconscious can't tell the difference between an imagined reality and reality. And an easy way to prove this is if you imagine yourself biting into a lemon, just imagine it vividly and your saliva glands will fire. Your saliva glands are involuntary muscle. So your subconscious mind imagined it, your saliva glands fire, which means that your body literally thought you were biting the lemon. So what you do is you imagine yourself in a dream achieve moment. What does it look like if it all worked out? And you let your body begin to align with that experience. You begin to feel what it feels like. And then you begin to think, okay, what are the beliefs that align with that version of me? If I'm with my partner, my partner thinks I'm sexy. My partner thinks I'm worthy. My partner thinks I'm lovable. My partner thinks I'm all that. And so you begin to identify what those beliefs are. Then anytime you think the other belief, you interrupt it. You refire the new belief because what fires together, wires together. We know this about neuroscience. So this is what this woman did. Her name is Marianne. And so Marianne, her dream achieve moment was dancing in a red dress to the song Lady in Red by Christopher. (laughs) So she began to fire this. And sure enough, she started to take different action. That led her to meeting Wayne. Wayne, on their very first date, picked her up in a Corvette and took her out. And they had a totally great time and hit it off. And, And then after several months, Wayne asked her to be his girlfriend you know, Wayne's in his late 70s, she's oh. early 70s. They start dating. And then a couple months later, she sends me a picture of her in a red dress. And they're literally dancing to the song Lady in Red in her red uh. dress, living the vision that she had said. And today they're married. Wow. And now they're on the Golden Bachelor. It's become full circle. Oh, yeah. There are a couple learnings from that story. One, it's, it's never too late to date. Yep. Right. That's that's a major takeaway. But the second learning is for many of us who think about attraction, that achievement moment for us is like, oh, if I look a certain way Mm -hmm. or if I have a certain job, everything's external. If I had this amount of money or I lived in this kind of house. But what you're saying is the external doesn't get you there because you don't fully embody it. But when you think about yourself in this energetic state, then you fully embody that energy and then you start aligning yourself and your actions with that energy. And that's a much more Itch. profound shift than like an external achievement. Exactly. It's like take a magnet, right? One side's positive, the other's negative. If you're trying to attract something to that magnet that has the opposite charge to it, it is effortless. Like you go up and it just, voom, it attracts it to it. No matter how much action the magnet is taking, if it's strong enough and its field is strong enough, it will draw and do it everything that's a match. You flip it around. It doesn't matter how much action you take with that magnet. It's going to push away the very thing that you're trying mm. to pick up with that magnet because the energy is repelling. For anyone who's been online dating forever and you're just attracting <laughs> the same circumstance and you're taking a ton of action and you're like, why is this not working? I believe there's three main keys to this. There's what I call a love abundant mindset, Mm -hmm. a mindset that's aligned with the result that you want. So the beliefs, but then you've got to have the energetics, which is the love abundant heart set. And then the third piece is the love abundant skill sets. 
So you do need to take action. You do have to have the skill sets to navigate both the dating and relationship process, but it begins first with the mindset and the heart set. If that's not right, it doesn't matter how many skill sets you have, it's just not going to work. I really like that because we talk a lot about yeah. mindset, but there's something about the embodiment of the heart, like coming from that side, that's yeah. really powerful that I think is new to people, which is great. What other energy killers do you see on dates? Because I'm just thinking about like, we hear of like the people that just want love so badly right that like it's almost yeah. like i don't like the word desperation but there is a little bit of that vibe that's like coming off what other vibes do you feel like are really getting in people's way oh uh, well a really common one is where like let's imagine you're going on a date when this is a quality person and it might be the first time in a while you're like okay this person's attractive they've got the success that i'm looking for they're maybe spiritual they've got all the things that i like and so in that moment Many of my clients will share, they say, so how do I not try to get him to like me, uh -huh. for example? How do I not try to get her to like me first yeah. and just be myself? And so when you fall into that, that trap, you know on paper what their qualities are, but you don't really know them yet because it's a first or second date. So yeah. getting someone to like you where your effort and energy is on how do I impress them yeah. versus the beginning should be two things focused on a date. Number one is have as much fun as freaking possible. Mm -hmm. People forget that Most of these, <laughs> in today's world. 99% yeah, of all the dates you go on with people are going to end up being not the person, right? Yeah. A lot of people go on more than 100 dates. So 99% of them are not going to be your person. So why not have as much fun while you're in the process? And then number two is your job is to actually discover who they are, not get them to like you before you even know who they are and whether or not they align with you. So the second big turnoff is we tend to put way too much pressure like one of the things that creates this desperation breath and this like that energy is we put so much pressure on these dates and so much pressure on figuring out if it's the one right away. Right. Because we <laughs> don't want to waste time. Like I don't want to go on a second date if I don't know it's the one. Like I had that so bad. I was in a phase and this was not an effective phase for me where I would not even approach a woman if I thought she couldn't be possibly the one. Wow. Yeah. Just even like, approach. Even approach. Like how much pressure is that? <laughs> it's a lot. How am I going to know? Way too much pressure. So take all the pressure of having to find out if this is the one, your person, off of you until you've been down the road with them a month or yeah. two. Your only job in the beginning is to answer this question. Do I want to go out with them one more time? Mm -hmm. That's it. Just one more time. Just one more time. And then what I find is that what happens is you take all the pressure off of you, the expectation, the stress, the tightness, and then you're free to be. Yeah. You're free to have fun. You're free to like make it. I was actually doing a podcast recently where the person was like, you know, all the ways you can screw it up early in the relationship. And yes, you can, but I find a way better mentality is it's hard to screw up the right thing. Yes. We always say that. Now you can. Can you screw up a good thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if we're psychotic or we lose it or we cheat or we do whatever, but people agonize over the right words to send in a yeah, text. Yeah, yeah. You know, people yeah. agonize like, over cares? how to respond. <laughs> people agonize, should I tell him I like him? Should I not? Uh -huh. what, if, what if I ask right. him? Da, 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 da. And it's like, look, he's the right guy. 80% of it could be off. He's the right guy. He's he's going to give you leeway because he likes you. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to really so, fuck it up. Like, it can't be just like what right. you say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody's thinking about you under that microscope. No. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, she used the wrong word in that, in that text. Nobody's thinking about that way. But there is something about compatibility in that early phase of dating that sometimes we, we think is like, it's about the chemistry. It's about how we come off and if they like us back. But a lot of it's just, are we authentic in who we are? How yeah. authentic is our energy? So what is your take on the slow burn? You know, <laughs> building chemistry and building attraction over time. Maybe first couple dates, like, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'll go on another date, but building that slowly. Meaning, do I believe in friendships that can catch fire? Well, maybe it's not even friendships. Maybe it's just, you know, you met someone on a dating app, you go on a few dates, things are good-ish. Yeah. Can that attraction build over time? What we know is that attraction 100% can build over time. As you get more aligned and build a stronger mental, emotional, and spiritual connection, mm -hmm your attraction amplifies. Even if your attraction was good in the beginning, it builds over time. It's not like only if it's bad. As you really begin to love this person, 
And we're not talking about like fall in love with like just the, the feelings of it. As you begin to love them, you begin to show up for them, you begin to pour into them, you begin to establish trust in the relationship. The Gottman Institute wrote a great book called What Makes Love Last. The whole book is about one idea and it's trust. Mm. What builds trust, what erodes trust. And when you have trust, that's the precursor to love which then gives rise to the experience of like, oh, wow, I've got an amplified chemistry with this person. I have seen it time and time again, where people go on dates, like you're saying, you ain't, you're saying it's good, but it's like, eh, and then I don't know, should I go on another date? And they do, and they go on a handful of dates, and then it's like someone flips a light switch yeah. on. And yes. it's, this, it's this connection that really catches fire. And I will say, I've coached clients that, gave it their best shot and it didn't. Yeah, It's not like it's guaranteed to, but here's my rule of thumb. And I'd love to hear your guidelines on this is give it four or five dates, mm. give it to the point where there's enough emotional, mental connection. And you have some physical connection that if you want to kiss, kiss, you will know at the time that you kiss them after four or five dates, if there's enough chemistry there to move it forward, or if it's like you're kissing a sibling, like it's like, no, uh, this isn't going to work. I don't even have siblings, but I'm like uh, grossed out by that. <laughs> I mean, I definitely agree with you. I think if it's like you go on a date and you're just like, absolutely not, or you see someone on a date again, absolutely not, then I don't think you need to waste either of your time. But I think if there's something there, like it doesn't need to be fireworks, but you're like, I'm attracted enough. And I know people like hear that as settling, but I think that those are the grounds that it can continue to evolve. I'm with you on like, I don't know what the exact number of dates are, but I think what we always say is like, is it growing every time you see someone? Like, do you feel a mm-hmm. little more towards them? And I think like four to five is probably a general benchmark because that's like roughly what, like a month ish of dating. So I think that's fair. I would agree with that. Yeah, I love that, Julie, because I'm not a fan of rules. But I do like tools, like principles that Mm -hmm. you can apply in a setting. Because some people are like, well, it's been four dates and I'm not all the way there. And so exactly, you don't want to get hung up on the number, but your principle of, is it growing every time that you see them? Are you moving in the right direction? That's what you want to know. I want to dive into this even more. But before we do, let's take a quick break to hear from our partners. You know what season we're entering into? Cashmere season. Oh, yes. With the cooler months ahead full of pumpkin spice lattes, Wouldn't it be nice to be in a cozy cashmere sweater from Quince while sipping on said pumpkin spice latte? Quince is known for their Mongolian cashmere sweaters from just $50, but also have beautiful leather jackets, cotton cardigans, soft denim, and so much more. I personally have the softest pair of biker shorts from Quince that are just as nice and comfortable as the really expensive brands, but like half the price. See, by partnering directly with top factories and cutting out the cost of the middleman, the savings are passed on to us. So lucky us. Get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash datable for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash datable to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. As the crisp fall air rolls in and the leaves begin to change, don't rely only on pumpkin to spice up your life. Embrace the natural power of cannabis this fall with Vaya. Whether you're lounging by the fire or exploring new adventures, Vaya's premium federally legal cannabis products are your perfect companion. Farmed and crafted with care in the U.S. and trusted by over half a million customers, Vaya has a product for everyone. Vaya just launched their high THCA flower and brand new flavors for the THCA vape slime. So you have more options than ever to blaze your own trail. You've all heard me talking also about their gummies. My favorite is the high love gummy that will awaken your senses and increase blood flow. I absolutely love it for pretty much every occasion. So if you are over 21 years of age, head to viahemp.com and use the code datable to receive a 15% off. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Please Please support our show and tell them we sent you. This fall, enhance your everyday with Via. 
Just a quick announcement before we get back into the episode. We are back with another cohort of our Finding Your Person program that is open until October 6th. So if this is something you've been thinking about for a while, maybe you've thought about joining other cohorts, but the time wasn't right, or you're a new listener and you're like, heck yes, I just want to find this person already. This is the program for you. We love this program. We love talking to all the participants as they go through it during our check-ins and see just the transformation that happens real time of this newfound knowledge of what was holding them back. And then also the motivation and tools to approach the dating world with just more confidence and ease and excitement. So visit datablepodcast.com slash programs to get your spot. Again, they are limited and the program will close on October 6th. But if you're interested, I would highly recommend doing so quickly as we do sell out. And we also have a new iteration this time called Finding Your Person Plus. So take a look at the options and see what works best. Also, the link is in the show notes. Looking forward to talking to you soon and back to the episode. I want to apologize ahead of time. This is an ignorant question. I'm sorry, this is a gendered question, but I have a very small sample size, but I only hear of attraction building over time with my girlfriends. I've never once had a guy friend tell me, oh, it was a slow burn. Like yeah. at first I wasn't that attracted to her. And then all of a sudden I was. I've never heard that from a guy. Obviously, this is from my own sample size. Any thoughts on that, Matt? I do think anytime you speak in generalities, there's going to be exceptions sure. to the rule. But I do think generalities help us understand just dynamics that exist so that if we run into that dynamic, we've got perspective. Men generally are more visual yeah. than mm -hmm. women in terms of attraction. And so they're physical attraction will skyrocket faster. It's like arousal. Men get aroused way faster than women do in mm -hmm. bed. It could, the same thing kind of relates to attraction, like their attraction ignites based on a sexuality attraction. And what I have also learned is that women, it's layered. It's not just physical attraction that is required, but the emotional connection, the mental connection, the spiritual connection, all of that can fuel the physical attraction and massively amplify it. Um, but that said, I do know firsthand men, like they like the person, but it wasn't like they would pick her out of the yeah. lineup. Mm -hmm. It was like when I was saying I was trying to spot my wife across the room. It wasn't like that. For them, it was like, oh, they got to know them. And this woman was so amazing and so cool and this and that. They was like, this is my person. Like there's, there's plenty of physical attraction, but it's not the most physically beautiful woman I've ever seen. She's the most beautiful inside and yeah. out woman that I've ever seen. I think we see that a lot too. I think with both of them, there has to be a baseline. Like it can't be like, I yeah. found this person repulsive and now all of a sudden I'm <laughs> obsessed with them. I think it's what this you the said, thing ever. It's like they were attractive. It's not like they weren't attractive, but it grew over time, the bond. And it's probably like the yeah. actions too. And I'm curious, like we talked about some of the repellers of attraction and the vibe you're giving off. What is some of the vibes that actually are attraction enhancers? So for, again, this is gendered. So there's always exceptions to the rule on this. But mm -hmm. what I have found is that women will do things so they can get together Men get together so they can do things. Mm. And so what that wait, means wait, is- Wait, say that again? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I got that. Like, have you ever called up your girlfriends? You're like, hey, let's just get together for girls and I. We'll get some wine and some uh -huh. food and whatnot. You're getting together to talk. Like, you just want to share. Yeah. You just want to yes. talk. You want to hear what's going on for each other. Yeah, men are way less doing that. They want to get together so they can do things. They're do like, things. I call okay. my buddy. I'm like, hey, let's go golfing. Yeah. Hey, let's go surfing. Uh -huh. Hey, let's go axe throwing. Hey, let's go do this thing. <laughs> now, we do want to talk. You know, hey, well, let's go grab some beers or whatever. You know, But it's way more around the activity uh -huh. than it is where women just give themselves permission to like, let's just get together and yeah. Like that. Yes. Like my my buddy never calls me up and says, Can you just come to my house? I just want to like talk. Drinks, like yeah, drinks for that. us is like an excuse to talk. We're like the right. activity yeah, exactly. is just there. Yeah. Yeah. So on dates, you can use that to your advantage. Mm. And so the common date is, well, let's just go get some coffee or go get dinner. And okay, that's fine, but it's normal. And the whole purpose is you're just talking. Well, a date where you're actually doing something and getting to know each other through the activity where perhaps there's uh, some adventure element mm. to it or a competitive element to it or whatever it be, even if it's from mini golf and an arcade <laughs> to going uh, on a hike after you know them a little bit better or doing uh, something that has an activity to it 
naturally increases the bond that he will feel mm. with you mm. versus dinner and talking. That's interesting. So that's one element for women who are wanting to build attraction. And really, when I talk about this, to me, masculine and feminine are not gender. Like I know feminine men, I know masculine women. And to me, they're energies that you gravitate towards certain ways of being. So when I speak about this, it's not really men. It's the masculine that loves activities and bonds through that, where the feminine bonds through communing and connection and communication. So if you're wanting to attract a masculine person, whether it's male or female, go do an activity together. If you're the masculine and wanting to build energy with the feminine and like same sex couples, typically what we see is once tends to lean towards their masculine, towards their feminine, and it's a scale, like it's a spectrum. It goes up and down. If a masculine, anyone's listening saying, oh, I want to build connection with the feminine, it's through communication, yeah. it's through connection, Definitely. it's through how mm -hmm. can we go deep with this person. We hear that from our like hetero women listeners all the time is like attraction. They could be attracted to the person, but if they can't go deep and have that emotional connection, it just fizzles out. 100%. I think one of the most infuriating things you can hear when you're single, but I think it holds true and I saw you had a YouTube video about this, is like stop trying, like don't try so hard. What do you mean by that energy? And like, how do you use that? Because like, I feel like a friend told me that when I was like in the thick of like serial dating and I was just like, oh, you don't get it. But at the same time, looking back all these years <laughs> later, I'm like, she was right because I was trying so hard that I was kind of like what you were describing earlier. Like I was trying to get everyone to like me that I was like putting on this persona version of me. So how do you like strike that balance? Well, and it's easy to kind of get into a rhythm or even a rut of being where it's just like, it's exhausting, <laughs> right? It's like, you've got on so many dates, you've got on so many things. When the try hard vibe, one of the, and I don't know if you relate to this, Julie, you ever have anybody tell you, you know, you'll find it when oh, you're yeah, not looking? Yeah. That was the same <laughs> one. I was also like rolling my eyes on that, but it's true. It also worked that way. <laughs> and I and probably it, told people that. Yeah. <laughs> And so it comes from a place of love and it's infuriating when you're rehearing that message because I was mm -hmm. like, look, me not looking is like me not breathing. Right. I want love so bad. How do I not look? I would look everywhere I went. But there's an element of truth. Like when you hear that, you know, there's something about that that rings true. But what is it? But then, you know, it's not entirely true because, you know, people who were looking and found right. love. You can't just like sit on your mm -hmm. couch and hope someone shows up. <laughs> so it finally dawned on me. That it's not that you find it when you're not looking, it's you find it when you're not lacking. Mm. Meaning, because like attracts like, the majority of our vibe, we do not have to be perfect at this, but if our major dominant vibe is there's something missing in my life. Yeah. I'm really lonely. I'm really aching. Yeah. I'm really, uh, that's the major dominant vibe. Well, you compare that to the vibe of when you're in the relationship. Uh -huh. When you're in the relationship, your major dominant vibration is supposing it's a good relationship is gratitude. You feel filled up. You feel you're giving love instead of looking to get love. You're giving love. And so that gap is what prevents us from finding love when we're like constantly trying hard and we're looking. So it's like, okay, well, how do I shift from not lacking to a having vibration? And literally a client was just talking about this. She was like, I really feel like I've been putting so much effort and I feel like I'm burned out, but I don't want to give up. How do I balance these two situations? Mm -hmm. And I said, try on this possibility. And it is let yourself off the hook from having to find the person when you're living your daily life. Because she was saying, mm -hmm. grocery store, she's yeah. looking. <laughs> Gym, she's looking. Uh -huh. like, is he in the weight room? Is he on a machine? Like where is she just constantly <laughs> looking? It's exhausting. And, it's just, and I get yeah. it. It's exhausting. So it's like, okay, push pause on that. Give yourself complete freedom to you're not going to meet your man right now <laughs> in life. Like just give yourself freedom take the pressure off and instead focus on living a life that you mm -hmm. love. So like, what do you love doing and pour into yourself it, give yourself massages, get back into a new exercise routine. You know, what is it that you want to explore? Like take the trips that you wanted to take. What do you love doing? Because like attracts like, so you will find the person you love on the path yeah. of the life you love because you're doing things that you love. So you're way more in that vibe. So it's like, you don't have to turn dating off altogether. Pick whatever time of the yeah. week you're going to go online and you're just going to swipe and do things, just to kind of throw possibilities out there. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing right now is begin loving your life again. And I told her about a different client who did this. And so she started doing the five rhythms dance class. 
What's and that? Kind of this dance like modality. I, I don't know exactly five how it goes, rhythms. but she was like, okay. I love five rhythms. So she started doing that again. It completely put her in this space of feeling good, feeling alive back in her body. And she actually wrote that in her profile. She was like, I'm doing five rhythms and I love it. The next day, a guy reached out to her saying, you do five rhythms? I do five rhythms. I love yeah. five rhythms. They connected over that, bonded, met, dated, got married, all because she started like, okay, I'm going to start living a life I love again. Yeah, do it for you. Well, similar to this, I want to get your advice because I've been telling a friend of mine this for a long time. She went through a really bad breakup and I was like, start loving yourself. But she would admit to this. She is addicted to external validation. She Mm. absolutely does not feel attractive at all if she doesn't get external validation. She needs the attention. Uh She needs the text. She needs men to tell her that she's beautiful. So she's like, okay, if I do the things I love, like, okay, I want to take this pottery class. Are there going to be guys in there who are going to validate me and tell me that I'm beautiful? What advice would you give to someone like that? Who's just like, I can't live without this validation. So I love the full circle of this, you ate, because it goes all the way back to I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. The I'm not enough belief. I'm not enough unless it comes from somebody else. And this is a candy hit. You need it again and again and again. Yeah. It's like there's some part of me that's not enough, some part of me that I'm not loving. There's a great book, actually, if people want to go deeper into how to love yourself. It was written many years ago by one of my mentors, Dr. Gay Hendricks, and it's called Learning to Love Mm. Yourself. Okay. And the premise, the premise of the experience is that there's nothing more powerful or greater than love. And so love becomes this container in which you heal the unloved parts. And so there's this process where you begin to love the unloved. You love the parts of yourself that you don't like. You love the parts of yourself that you feel like aren't enough, whether it be personality, whether it be physical, whether it be your history, you surround those things in love. And you can begin by asking yourself, what in me needs my full love and complete acceptance right now. Mm -hmm. And then listen, you close your eyes and you just listen. And it'll be, oh, you know, this mistake that I made the other day or the fact that I didn't show up at my best in that moment. And then you imagine your heart space open up and you send a beam of love to that place in you, whether it's a memory or a thought or something physical and you surround it in love and you take a few deep breaths and you relax. And even if you don't feel anything right away, because people who are really stuck, they're not going to feel anything changing. Mm-hmm. Just the act of wiring and firing that neuronal set begins to shift our subconscious, begins to shift our energetic state, and it works miracles. This mm. is the thing that absolutely changed my yeah, life. I was going to ask huh. you, you started off with like the self-love. We kind of put it on pause to talk about all the stuff, but where yeah. we got back here. So was this like what you did or were there other tactics that you did too? There was another idea that was really, really profound for me. I learned this from Dr. Sheree Carter Scott, where she was talking about being a soft place to fall for yourself and others. Hmm. So remember I was talking about how critical I was, how judgmental I was of yeah. myself. And it was all stemming from, I have to be perfect to get love. So any place that wasn't perfect, oh, it was my enemy because it was preventing me from having the love and connection that I wanted. And so if I made a mistake, I would grill myself, like rake myself across the coals thinking that that was going to teach me a lesson so I don't make that same mistake again. Like, oh, you're so stupid and how can you do this? Well, Dr. Shri Carter Scott really helped me understand that the way your subconscious mind works, and I think this is completely fascinating, Mm. is... We replicate the behavior we get the most attention for, positive or negative. And you see it in little kids. There's a whole parenting movement, because I have three little kids right now, where it's called catch them being good and praise them versus catch them being bad. When your kids are finally silent and they're like playing nice, it's like, oh, I can talk to mommy right now or like I can get something done. But it's when they start fighting and that's when you step in Mm. and you catch them and you help them correct. But Mm. that's when they get your attention. Right. So you notice if that's the only time you give them focus Uh. and attention, they'll just go to that because they want your attention. So we will replicate the attention we give ourselves and whatever volume we give it. So if we're screaming internally and berating ourselves for making this mistake or for getting something or screwing up, guess what we're programming ourselves to do? Is to do do more of that. Mm -hmm. So 
We don't want to miss the learning, whatever lesson there is to learn. We glean the learning, but then be a soft place to fall and be like, look, everybody makes mistakes. I love myself. It's okay. And I'm going to move on and like turn the volume way down yeah. on the criticism during the mistakes and the way up on the compassion. Mm. And so it was mm. those two things of what in me needs myself love and compassion today and also being a soft place to fall that completely shifted my own ability to generate that loving vibration. Love that. Mm. What were some of the challenges that you faced when you first started doing this? <laughs> doing this in terms of the self-love or the dating self -love, my wife? Self-love for yourself. So one of the biggest challenges that we will all face is called the upper limit syndrome. Mm. You guys ever heard of that? No. No. To Educate tell. us. <laughs> okay. I won't take credit for this. It's another Gay Hendricks concept. He writes about it in a book called The Big Leap, and it's totally true and it's phenomenal. And here's what it is. We all have a thermostat, like an energetic thermostat setting to an amount of love, joy, happiness, and positive feeling, okay? Just like your house has a thermostat. If it gets too hot, the air conditioner kicks in and brings you back down. Likewise, if it gets too cold, the heat kicks in and brings you right back up. So it tries to keep you within a range that it's used to. We do the same thing with love. So the biggest challenge, UA, in growing my sense of love, growing my intimacy that I allow myself to experience with somebody is hitting the upper limit. And what happens is when we hit an upper limit, our subconscious mechanism kicks in and tries to drag us back down. That's when we begin to notice what's wrong with the other person. Huh. That's when we begin to nitpick yeah. the little things about the relationship. All of a sudden, we feel like our self-esteem just deflates. We're like, God, I'm, just, I'm not feeling confident today. I'm not feeling good today. Like, what's going on? And so notice if the challenge that you're experiencing, if you notice you're extra irritable or you start thinking about something, like I get this with my kids, like we're having an amazing day at the park. I'll give you an example with my wife oh. and a relationship in just a second, <laughs> but the kids, we're having this great day and I'm feeling joy and I'm like, this is so awesome. And then my mind will imagine one of them running out into the street and getting hit by a car and oh. the ambulance comes and me like sobbing and it all happens like three seconds. And I'm wow. like, why am I thinking about that? And I'll go, oh, I was just feeling really, really good. Oh. I hit an upper limit. It was bringing me back down into huh. equilibrium. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. My wife and I used to have Friday night fights, we'd call it. Because <laughs> all week, all week, we're fine. All week, we're good. And then, and then Friday night, we will find something stupid oh to fight about. And what is that? That's anticipating deeper intimacy, uh. anticipating emotional <sighs> intimacy on the date, physical intimacy when we get home. All week, we haven't been at that level of connection. And so that's the subconscious mechanism trying to keep you within a range. And so we begin to anticipate that and be like, okay, I'm going to let this slide because I know it's just my own sabotage mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's my own mechanism bringing me down. That is the biggest challenge in trying to raise the amount of love and positive energy that we experience in our lives. That's wow. fascinating. I was wondering, I was taking inventory of all the fights I've had in relationships, and I feel like they always happen after a really joyous yeah. moment, like a great dinner or like great sex. And I'm like, what am I doing? Am I just sabotaging this relationship on purpose? Thank you for validating that. So there's a really fast and easy technique to reset and raise the calibration set point. And that is because you, you talked about like right after a great date or right after great sex and like a fight will happen, dip down. When you notice you're having thoughts of like, I want to fight this person or this is really irritating <laughs> or, you know, I'm feeling really bad, like negative about myself, check in and go, was I just feeling really mm. good? And if you were, now this is an upper limit. And so what you can do is you use your physiology to change your psychology. You spread your arms open nice and wide. And you imagine yourself like a funnel <laughs> to the infinite. And you spread your arms open nice and wide. Really? And you kind of move your shoulders back and forth like this. And you imagine the funnel growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can close your eyes and you can say, I am expanding in love and positive energy every day as I inspire others to do the same. <sighs> And you take a deep breath and you do three rounds of that and you will literally feel yourself in a higher vibration and you will reprogram hmm. yourself for higher set points. You'll see this in business. People get major success and then they'll struggle and they won't uh, sustain it. Think about athletes yep. and artists, right? Always. They get the major contract, then they get injured. Or an artist, they'll hit the major tour and then they'll go down the drug route and they don't know how to sustain that positive energy without then supplementing it with the drugs and they're just trying to mm. balance, right? So it's a 
fascinating human dynamic that hardly anybody knows about. I'm so glad that you shared that with us and our audience had yeah. blown for that. But it kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, one of the other things I remember from you all these years was your project Everlasting, where you went around the country and you interviewed couples that had made it that were married for 40 uh -huh. plus years, right? They were oh, very yeah. successful couples. And I think I'm curious, <laughs> like what you learned from that project, like I'm sure you learned so much that would take a whole episode to do, but you could kind of distill the, the high level of like what it takes to like build connection and that in turn goes to attraction. What you were saying was missing for you at the beginning in the early stages. And then what also sustains that through all the years later? I love, Julie, that you brought that up and that you know that story. And so for anyone who's listening, who just the premise of this is after that getting voted last on the island, it was during that time where I was spending time with my grandparents and trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to shift? And my grandfather's health was failing. They had been married 63 years and they were still madly in love with each other. And I thought to myself, that's what I want. Like, I want that kind of a relationship. And so it was this crazy idea to jump in an RV and interview with my best friend and a documentary film crew as two literally clueless bachelors when it came to relationships, <laughs> interviewing America's greatest marriages for their secrets to what makes love last. And so there's a whole nother episode on how we actually got it because we were broke. Like we didn't have money to do all this. <laughs> so we literally got it sponsored and we traveled 12,000 miles and interviewed over 300 couples and it wow. changed my life. Okay, what are some big takeaway components from yeah. this? One is I saw my parents divorce, all my friends' parents divorce. I had a belief that once your relationship got, and I would, back then I would call it stained. It got stained by an argument. Mm. It got stained by a mistake. Someone broke an agreement or screwed up somehow. You were never going to get it back. Mm. Mm. That created such pressure on the relationship. That was one of the things that was sabotaging. And what I learned from these couples was that, no, no, every relationship that's great goes through really tough times. It goes through times where you don't even feel like you're in love anymore. Love isn't a feeling. The feeling of love comes and goes in great long-term relationships. Like you always have this baseline, but how infatuated and in love with yeah. this person is ebbs and flows. And actually that love is a verb. Love is what you do. Love is giving and that the feeling of love follows the giving. And often I would wait to give until I felt in love. Like I would mm -hmm. wait in my longer term relationships yeah. that were like a year or two years. I got to this place where I was like, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm not really feeling it today. And, and then start questioning, is this the right person? Yeah. And so I'd pull back instead of lean in and give because the feeling of love follows that mm. giving spirit. Huh. Okay. So for me, that was like game changing. And on that same note of relationships being stained, no, they overcame everything you could imagine. We heard stories about people overcoming cheating, uh -huh. people overcoming losing children, wow. which is the hardest thing a wow. couple can go through. People overcoming like job changes, all kinds of challenges. And they were more in love now than they were when they got married, according wow. to them. And you could see it. You could see the love. And to me, that blew my mind. I was like, holy moly, the possibility to go through life together and have love continually build through the challenges, that was a whole paradigm shift for me. And it took the pressure off of relationships having to be perfect yeah. and never screwing up and being like, oh, we could actually become stronger because of this was was massive. I love that. I think even in the early mm. stages, I could see how that falls through too, like reducing that pressure that you were talking about earlier of when you're not showing up as your authentic self because there's so much pressure. So you're saying the secret to everlasting love is not that initial text you send? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that word <laughs> choice that you used in the beginning? <laughs> what? As long as you are 100% perfect <laughs> in that text, yeah, it's, perfect. Uh, yes. it's all going to work out. Use Grammarly and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and you're good. I mean, you've given us so many <laughs> words of wisdom, but if you could leave our listeners maybe with like one last tip about like building a trap action or connection i think they do go hand in hand what would that be maybe ones that are in the thick of dating right now it would be this and this is my belief the feeling and longing you have for love is the counterpoint of his love for you also or her love for you also those two things coexist together because i think a big part of the discouragement is this feeling of like what if it never happens yeah for me? Mm -hmm. Like it can happen for other people, but it might not be meant for me. Like we go through years of being single. And so it's to remember that that feeling that you have, the longing you have for love is love's evidence 
in your life. And so you can relax into that. You can know the truth of that. You can proceed with ease. And your number one job is to show up as you are because it is hard to screw up the right thing. And he's going to connect with you. And the more you do that, you circumvent so many of the things that tend to sabotage us. So that would be my main message. Love that. I mean, there's so many takeaways from this conversation. I mean, we've talked about this before, but this conversation really solidifies like so much of attraction is what you're putting out there. And I think like we've seen this before. I've definitely been guilty of like, well, if I lose five pounds, like then I can start dating like that stuff. It's not going to make or break at the end of the day. Like I feel like at times where I had that extra five pounds, that's when I met someone like that's not going to be what does it. It's how you're showing up what you're putting out there, how secure you're feeling with the rest of your life. And like, I think I didn't really connect it before this conversation. I actually like did this course last night. This came out too of like behind every fear is this feeling of not feeling enough. And I think that's something that like we have heard a lot of like why we seek validation in dating. But I think like there was a lot of ways that you connected the dots of like how that comes down to like attraction outside of just like feeling like maybe I'm lacking Andy to feel perfect. Like I think that piece of just what I'm putting out there and what internally is happening, how it's actually showing up as criticism or judgment for others was really like connected the dots for me personally. So thank you for that. I think you dropped a lot of like actual tangible tips today too about loving yourself. I think that's like such a buzzword of you just got to love yourself and then it all falls into place. But I think what I heard from all that is like self-compassion too and just like understanding that you're human just like all the people that you're dating out there well julie and ua i want to just affirm what you guys are doing in this podcast and with these conversations because it's so important and you two have just a beautiful way of creating a safe place for people to discuss and talk and share and both of you you're so authentic And I can truly see because I had a beautiful and fun time researching your podcast (laughs) and what you're doing and watching these videos. I just want to honor the great work and great value you're bringing to the world through this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is such an honor to be in company of someone who really shares these same values and belief systems. And we keep learning and you've really taught us so much in this one episode. I think the one visual I have is the magnet visual you gave us in the beginning. It's like you can paint the front of that magnet, whatever you want, make it as most attractive of a magnet as you want. It will still repel the other magnets who have the positive side coming towards you because you haven't worked on the internal, like the backside of the magnet. And when we think about attraction, we often think about attracting others to us using this external paint that we put on. When in that magnet visual you gave us, someone can only get us as close as they possibly can and they'll still be repelled because they can't come that close if you're not opening yourself up. So I think doing that internal work, that's where the attraction starts. We've had it backwards for so many years. We think attraction starts from the outside, but it starts from the inside. And that energy is what attracts and brings people in. You know, I often think about my time in Greece last year when I had my solo trip after this terrible breakup was the most attractive I ever felt in my life, not because of how I looked or what I did. It's just I loved myself so fucking much. Like, every day I woke up, I was like, fuck, I love myself. Oh, my God, I'm so lovable. And I remember just attracting all kinds of energy around me that I wasn't seeking. I just felt so good. And I truly felt like it was mm, found myself again, you know, that true love. So I hope that our listeners can take away from this is start falling in love with yourself again and be your number one lover in your life. And you will see all the attraction come into your life. Thank you for that expansion exercise as well. If people want to learn more about your work, where can they find that? The best place is bravethinkinginstitute.com. So they can go to bti.com. And what's beautiful is we've got a whole division on love and relationships, as well as health and business and just general personal development. It's a lot of great free resources there. Wonderful. We'll link that in our show notes. And we'll also link your YouTube because you have a lot of good content on there too. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you, Julie. You do. And our listeners, while you're on 
the internet. <laughs> Why don't you head over to our Apple Podcast, give us a rating and review as well. Five stars and in the body of your review, you can tell us what you learned from this episode. How are you starting to fall in love with yourself? How are you expanding your heart? We want to hear about your learnings. And also, while you're there, why not pre-order our book coming out in January 2025, How to Be Dateable? <laughs> we touch upon a lot of these learnings we've had throughout our eight plus years of doing this podcast and how we've seen daters succeed in dating, not through external validation, but through that internal work. Okay, on that note, we're going to wrap up this episode. Stay, Stay dateable. dateable.